to show you what Gambit looks like and to show you what the color space looks like, I'm going to quickly make a test environment. And it's not about setting up this test environment. You do not have to do this. What I'm basically doing is making three documents, each with 12 pixels, one height of one and one height of resolution. And I'm going to show you the differences between the color spaces. I find that it's easier to understand it if you see it. So I'm going to quickly do this very fast. So basically this is a 12 pixels by 12 pixels by one pixel document. And it'll allow me to show you color space. Okay, I'm just going to make sure that you see what I'm doing. Uh, here I have a, a document and in this document it's RGB. Adobe RGB 1998. This one is sRGB and this one is CMYK and you can see CMYK at the top of this one RGB on both of these but you cannot see whether this one's sRGB or this one's RGB 1998. The only way I can tell is over here in my info palette it shows it right here. Okay so to kind of show you look out for this. All right, so how colors separate? What I'm going to do is pick a very saturated red, the top of the food chain, saturated red, 255. And then I'm going to choose a lower red. So I'm going to choose this one first and then say 100. And you can see that this is the red spectrum. Okay, that means only red is on, zeroed out with green and blue. So I can only see red. And I'm going to take my gradient tool and hold shift, make sure this one's on, and click and drag across. Click and drag across. And click and drag across. All right, now I want to show you exactly what the difference is between these documents. So first off, let's look at sRGB, this one, compared to RGB. And you can find that there is a difference between how many colors of red there are. Here, in sRGB terms, I have a full spectrum of red, and each one of these is represented by a different shade of red except for the last two. This one, RGB, has different variations of red, but if you look, from here to here is almost the same color red, from here to here is the same color red, from here to here is the same color red. So the gambit, and the gambit is from one color to the next, is very limited with this Adobe 1998 RGB. And it has a full range of sRGB until it hits the higher end of the spectrum. These are saturated colors. Lastly, CMYK, you can see that it has all reds and all reds are different, except for the difference is it did not hit the high end of the spectrum. It can't see the high red here. So that's that in that term, CMYK has a good gambit of colors, good, not the best, not even close, but it can't see bright colors. All right, I want to dr draw a diagram here to kind of show you what's going on. So I have these three documents in the back. This one's going to be right there, but they're all different colors, okay, and they're all different gambits of colors. So what's going to happen here is you're going to have a camera, right? And that camera when I take a picture of it, 
It's going to get stored on a little memory stick and it's in sRGB. Then I'm going to bring it over to my computer and plug it in and download it onto my computer and it's going to stay sRGB. But the monitor, what is it? If it's sRGB, this camera knows sRGB and I can see it on the little uh, module on the back what the picture looks like. But is my monitor sRGB? Well, all computers have the ability to change color spaces. If I go to display and go to colors, I can go into this and I can choose sRGB and then I can assign it sRGB as my monitor. I can close this out and now it's part of sRGB. So now the pictures uh, best represent the what I see on the screen. And then I'm going to go and take these pictures to a kiosk and that kiosk is sRGB. So now I've gone from camera to kiosk and all the color matches what I see on the screen. So that's important. You got to understand that the color space must stay true for your workflow. So when you get to um, a kiosk that you've never had been before, ask the lab attendant what color space are you using and then adjust it computer wide all the way through to make sure that your color stays true and when you get your prints back make sure they look correct. If not you're gonna have to buy a calibration uh, device for your actual screen so you can match the calibration of the color all the way through. They sit on the screen and they absorb color and they tell you what to change in your settings All right, everybody wants to know which one is the best. What should I always use? And I would say, if you're thinking in those terms, what is the best? You don't really understand what you have available to you as far as color space. There is advantages of having a limited color space when it comes to uh, digital painting. So in digital painting terms, sometimes I'll use RGB. When I want to put it on the internet, I'll put it in sRGB. If I want to print it out using a kiosk at a computer or at Walmart, I'll use sRGB. CMYK is something I avoid like the plague, but keep in mind an RGB can quickly become a CMYK just by going like this. And it loses all the other property are the highest values of red. So I avoid it like the plague. See how bright it is after I hit undo? Only when I have to print CMYK do I worry about CMYK. Nowadays, local printers, they uh, print in a higher form of RGB and it's just a hybrid of CMYK. This is man-made ink. These are the color constructs of machine. This is what your monitor sees, your internet sees, your, all your electronic sees. This is ink that I mix by hand that becomes these. Also, it's ink that goes over the top of each other to make the tints of these reds. Okay? So, yeah. All right, so I'm not going to label them as good as bad. I'm going to say that, you know, you should definitely explore what you have available to you. And there is no right or wrong answer, but make sure you match your machine all the way through your workflow and you'll get a good print. Other than that, be inventive with color and the le and the color space and you're going to find out that you can do some amazing things with some color spaces that you can't with others.